Hey everybody, I'm back again with another video. This time I'm doing a battery powered spot welder. Now I've seen other designs on YouTube in the past where they've utilized a microwave transformer and using 110 volt power or mains power. Now that way works, but it seems kind of dangerous. So I wanted to design something that was simpler, more compact and utilize batteries. So I came up with a design and I'm going to show you that right now. Okay, so here's what I've got done so far. I put this in an ammo case and I put a couple of batteries in it. Now these are 12 volt and 7 amp hour batteries and I put some 12 gauge wire, just some standard electrical wire that's solid and I utilized these connectors uh, to hook to the battery. I then went over and put it on a set of wire nuts. I put each positive on one wire nut and each negative on the other wire nut. I then proceeded to take a negative wire, 12 gauge, all the way down here over to one side of the trigger for the solenoid. So that is hot all the time. Then I also took a black cable that is 8 gauge and ran that all the way through over to the tip of my spot welder. I took a red 8 gauge and ran that all the way over into one side of the solenoid, then put the other side of the solenoid and continued the red 8 gauge all the way to the other side of the tip. Lastly, I took this speaker wire, which is actually pretty thick, and since I'm only shorting uh, 12 volts to it, it should be fine, and ran that over to my contact switch. So when I press this, since this is a common and a normally open switch, when I press it, I complete the circuit, which sends 12 volts to the other side of the solenoid thus creating the uh, short across here and completing the circuit to the tip of the spot welder. Now I'm going to draw this up so that it makes it even easier but that's basically the design right there and all of these parts you can pretty much get at your hardware store or online. I will leave links in the description on uh, all of these parts but it's really simple an inexpensive way to create a battery powered spot welder. Please leave a comment uh, if you think I should drill a hole in the side here because I'm thinking about taking this wire coming out of the side with the leads and that way I can leave this closed uh, when I'm welding and then I was going to put possibly the button here and then I also want to put out a readout somewhere around here for the voltage so that I know how much voltage I have on the batteries and when it's time to charge it. Okay so this is about the easiest I can explain it. You start off with two batteries both 7 amp hour 12 volt and those equal if you put them in parallel which means both positives and both negatives go to the same spot uh, 12 volts 14 amp hours. So if you run those lines over, and as you can see, I drew in wire nuts. So you have the wires coming off of the wire nuts that are splicing them together. One negative goes to the trigger side of the solenoid. And then the other negative goes directly over to the tip of the spot welder. Secondarily, you have the positive, which goes to the wire nut one side of the positive goes to the remote button which is normally open and goes to the other side the trigger of the solenoid then you have from the positive that is connected to the wire nut up over you're feeding one side of the solenoid coming out when it is triggered going over and completing the circuit to create the spot weld with 8 gauge wire so that things do not get 
too hot. So that is, in essence, the battery powered spot welder. Okay, so <clears throat> I've done most of the welds. What I did here is I poked a hole in this piece so that later on I can solder on a, uh, a wire to that. And all I should have to do now is place this up on there. And then you only need to do it for a second. And now that should be welded on there. And it is. So that's pretty good. Okay, so let's do the second one. I'm going to take this and place it there so that I can get a good weld. Take the welder place it up here so I can find a good spot for it and then it should be just another quick boom so here's a quick tip that I learned by doing a few solders is the closer the uh, ends are together the worse the solder is going to be. You want to keep them a little bit spread because if they're too close it almost burns through the material. It, it almost becomes too hot. So keeping them a little bit more spread out actually is easier to control the arc and it makes a nicer looking weld. So I had to learn on this one. This is the very first uh, battery pack that I've ever welded before. So this was a trial and error process. Uh, right there because I was bending it to the right so I could show it on camera it the tips were a little bit closer Than I wanted them to be but it's still welded really well as far as it is not coming off and Like I said it actually burns through the material quicker the closer the tips are together But you don't want that too much because this nickel plated material really does burn quite quickly through Next, let's move on to an example that I did to show the proper distance of the tips as far as how far apart you want them so that they make a nicer weld. So what I did is I took some material and I put it on my workbench and I just welded the two pieces of material together. And like I said, the farther apart they are, the better the arc is to control because if you have them too close together then the arc becomes really big and welds the crepe out of it but if you um, just keep them a little bit more spread then the arc is less and you get nice penetration on each point so I would suggest that you keep the tips a little bit farther apart and as you can see I did burn my workbench just a little bit because it blasted through that material uh, pretty easily. So let's take a look at the welds. As you can see, they're nice and uniform and went through nicely. Um, in the future, I'm going to try to emulate this distance to keep it a little bit prettier. Like I said, this was my first attempt at welding or spot welding uh, a battery. So it's a learning process. And on the back side, you can see that it, it blasted through really good. And it ate up some of my uh, workbench in the process. But that's totally worth it. So now I want to bench test my battery with a meter and check it out. Mm -hmm. Right now I have zero volts. This should be positive. This should be negative. And there you go, 12.4 volts. That is all of the stuff welded. So I welded a band here so I could solder here. I got two solders that I can do here. I actually found that if I just take the screwdriver and press it really hard into the metal and just twist it, it'll actually tear the metal open too. So you don't actually have to hit it with a hammer. Uh, but there's all my welds. I got welds here and here and here and here and there. That's like my best one. That was like my first one. But uh, it worked pretty good. Didn't feel hot at all. I think the 
extra thick wires and connectors helped because I first tested this whole thing with this stuff so I wanted to make sure that the concept would work so I just made jumpers and you know hooked them into power with pretty much just 12 gauge wire but then I decided that if I wanted to do many welds in a row I wanted to have thicker wire so I have the 8 gauge coming back and then going to the solenoid and after going to the solenoid then it goes down to 12 and it doesn't seem to be getting hot at all and the battery seems to be kicking great power so I just have two 12 volt 7 amp batteries Let's check that out over here. so there and there I just put some tape over the conductors so that they couldn't short and everything seems to be working fine anyway guys I hope you found this DIY helpful. I know that the welds didn't come out super pretty, but they were very effective, and I'm really happy with the results. And the reason that I utilized battery power versus mains power is that battery power is much safer, plus portable. So you always wanna err on the side of safety first and always meter everything before you put power on it. And if you just spread the poles a little bit farther apart you're probably going to get a lot prettier welds but i believe that the design is sound i hope you found this video helpful and if you did please click like and if you really really liked it please subscribe i'm gonna get the tag out of here